Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Capricorn September 2022 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are stopping by for the first time and to the subscribers, much love and affection to you always. Now you subscribers know that we don't have any advertisements breaking into the content here. So you get to enjoy the complete video without interruption with other video content. And you therefore can enjoy the experience. And speaking of experience, do you know I've done a number of readings for Capricorns over the course of the last month from different parts of the world. It's been my great pleasure to do that. This is for one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings. And if you, yourself, might be interested to see what might be involved in a clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description below. But now let's draw five cards for you, shall we? Now, I have no idea what this deck is called. Honestly, I don't. My son and daughter were one Sunday afternoon out in search of cocktails, I think, and they happened uh, upon a flea market and they picked up this deck at the flea market for me. Now it came without any box or papers. Uh, all the cards are, are there. It was just tied up with string. And so I, I just have no idea what it's, what it's called. But because all the cards are here, it does act as a great tarot deck. And it's very accurate in my experience. Now, let's see what there is in store for you, shall we? Actually, We'll see what there is first. There's the Eight of Swords. That has a Chinese hexagram on it, by the way. I Ching hexagram. We'll have a discussion about that when it comes up. There's the Ace of Swords in the south. What's this? There is the Sun. Now there is, the, on this card here, as you'll see in just a moment, there is an, a, a Viking alphabet letter, letter from a Viking alphabet, the Elder Futhark alphabet, and there's also a Hebrew letter from the Hebrew alphabet, very, both very prominently displayed. So obviously um, we'll spend some time on them. And here is whom this is Brahma, King, Father of Wands in the East. Oh, we're going everywhere. We've got uh, the sun, Hebrew stuff, Viking stuff, Brahma from the Indian subcontinent. And here is the magician, again with a, a Viking letter and a Hebrew letter. So come, sit down here now, next to me. We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do your reading for you. Then now oh, I think you can see those. Let's start with this. The Magician. Oh, I'm getting a, a strange feeling coming from this energy here. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm having mixed feelings about it. Let's have a look first at the painting and see what there is. Now, this is very abstract, of course, this art, and you may have a, a take on it, which is different to mine. But this is what I am seeing anyway. First of all, let's have a look at the symbols that are in the foreground here. There is a, a wand, a cup, a stone from earth, and here is a sword for air. They are, of course, the four suits of the minor arcana. They are also ritual objects for the Holy Grail. Now, this magician here, he wears a like a tiara or a crown or something like that. And I think that is a symbol of the crowning power of the intellect. From his r right eye here, you can see emanating from there a number of crystals. And that indicates the ability to perceive the pure forms of existence, an ability that could be clouded by the unintegrated darker emotions which are represented by this figure emanating from the, the head of the magician. Now, there's a couple of, what I'll say first up is, is that you have at your disposal at the moment, everything that you need to make things go your way. You have all the tools available to you. And this is in general, a very positive card. The reason why I'm saying in general, is because I'm looking at this rune here and what can I say about that? 
This is the Viking letter, Ansuz, I suppose we'd call it. And look, the energy that I've got coming up here, and look, I'm, I call it as I see it, but it's warning you not to believe anything that you hear now. Lies, trickery, rumours and deceit are, I'm sad to say, possibly around you. Get second opinions, professional opinions, if it's to do with matters to do with money. And remember that any gratuitous advice that you get now should be considered biased and selfish. Someone may be trying to interfere with your plans. There's something of a feeling of poor communication and a lack of clarity. This is notwithstanding this very, very strong sun card under here. And uh, I think that this is a temporary thing. It's something going on in the background. You may discover that you are being misled is what I'm getting here. It's also an indication here, I think, that an elderly person is causing problems for you. There may be trouble with something you study or some knowledge that you have. There may be the temptation to misuse it. Turning now to this other thing that was on the card there. This is a Hebrew letter. See, it's got like a top. It almost looks like a tent, doesn't it? Well, of course, in... in the old days, of course, people just lived in lean-tos or shacks that had a roof, a back wall to them, and very often they were open. Sometimes they had a door, I guess. But this Hebrew letter is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it's called Bet. Aleph is the first letter, and so we have Aleph, Bet, and of course in the Greek that then becomes Alpha, Beta, or Alpha, Bet. Strange how these things work together. This is the first letter of the story of creation, at least as far as the Hebrew Bible or Christian Old Testament is concerned. The first book of that, of course, you may recall, is the book of Genesis. Now, the title before the, the, uh, the text of Genesis uh, starts to be read, the title is called Bereshit, which means in the beginning. And the B is the sound of here, the first letter of the Torah for the Hebrew audience or the Bible. Now, this Beth, I think here, looking at this, it represents the beginning of duality with the one creator bringing forth a created world so that there can be both a giver, the creator, and a receiver the created world, for the creator to bestow beneficence upon. Now this creates a dramatic leap from the absolute oneness to the ability for there to be two. It also creates the possibility for all duality and opposites. Yes and no, hot and cold, woman and man, up and down and so on. They're all forms of duality. In spirit, nothing is dual. Everything is together. Now, bet here. Actually, of course, you would have heard of the town in ancient Israel. It's probably still there, called Bet Lechem or Bethlehem. That means house of bread. Bread is used as a symbol for feeding the people, providing spiritual nourishment, at least in the mythology of the Christian Gospels. Now, Bet's literal meaning and form denotes a house, and it represents the universal concept of a container or a vessel. Thus, the created world is meant to house within it the spiritual the physical world is meant to be a place for the Creator's glory to manifest. The body is meant to contain the soul, allowing it to act in this world. The dual world actually contains within it the ultimate oneness, but it is concealed. Now the bet is the tool, the source of all building, containing, and then bringing forth all the other letters of the alphabet. And in your case, the power of bringing forth all the good things in your life, 
which is certainly indicated by these other cards. Now, I said there that I think that there is deception around, but I think that you might overcome that deception. Well, in fact, I think you will do, and that you'll see through things that are being told to you. And that is because of the presence of this Ace of Swords that's here above this very unsettling for me, this month card of the Magician. Now here, what do we see? Well, obviously here the sword points down the descent of sacred light into nature. The beginnings of green plants are on the top of the hill, which is about birth, fertility, growth, and the stirred up waves are the potential intelligence for life meeting active force. A great degree of intelligence for you now, clear thinking. A powerful personality is what you will be. And I think you could be quite emotional as well, notwithstanding that this is in fact a card generally to do with the mind. Now it particularly applies to Capricorn this month, as you would expect. But I think also that you might find that Pisces and Aquarius are also here for you. There is intellectual clarity here, original thinking, brilliant powers of thought, almost as if there is a divine inspiration because you'll have quick fire thoughts and ideas. Uh, your present clarity is a wonderful condition for your undertaking. You will be able to recognize facts and call by name things which other people would probably prefer to sweep under the carpet. Now, this entails a great responsibility on your part, though. Be sure never to express your insights heartlessly. But when you are fully in contact with love, use your sword without sparing yourself or others. Now, I really do think that this suggests that you are going to have a new perspective on life that was previously unclear. So now you're actually going to be able to get to the heart of the matter. You will have gained a new vision and you'll pursue opportunities which draw upon your creative and mental abilities. I also have the feeling here that you may well stand up for the rights of others very, you know, at this time, or stand up for yourself, for your personal values or, or belief. You've gained a new insight and inspiration. You've come out of the clouds of confusion and, and doubt, and you've come into clarities. There are blue skies here for now, for you, so forge ahead. What supports and what hinders your clarity? Say this to yourself at this time, because it is true, particularly, that I trust my clear perceptions. Now on that same horizontal line, there is another swords card and let's have a look at it. Oh, it's got an E chink on it as well. We'll have a look at that in just a second. Here, there is a card. It's called Interference. Now I'm not a great fan of putting titles on cards because generally they're wrong. Because what is important is how the cards interact with each other and what energies are coming through and of course what messages I'm getting with respect to the images and the, the astrology and the energies that are around. But here we have the Eight of Swords and while the swords, if you, you see these trees here, there's one, two, while the swords, they do not cut the trees, the trees nevertheless appear to be ill, don't they? They symbolize nature in trouble and possibly a sick spirituality. But a bright light is shining down on the scene and it shines on the trees and the plants. Now, there could well be some interference. Gossip. People might be gossiping about you, you know. You could have some jealousy about. Yeah, that's the, the image that I'm getting anyway. Now, if we look at this I Ching character here, or hexagram, it's called a hexagram because it means hex means six, 
and there are six lines. And what you do with these things is that they are read from the bottom up to the top. Now they can be read as couplets, that is two lines at a time, or as triplets, three lines at a time, or as I prefer to do, is just to read the six of them together. And sometimes I'll delve into what's in there to see if anything needs to be fleshed out. But this hexagram here, oh, by the way, the, the unbroken lines are yang, masculine principle. The broken lines are yin, feminine principle. So in this case, you see we have yang, yin, yin, yang, yin, yang. Okay, well, what does that mean, you ask? Well, there's a Chinese word which describes this particular hexagram. Uh, and it, or term, and it, it, it is Shi Ho. Now, Shi Ho, I would translate that roughly as biting through. Yeah, biting through. Do you know, oftentimes you can feel that life is unfair. However, if you look at the natural world, there is nothing resembling justice. Nature merely evens out its extremes or removes blockages to achieve balance. And this truth will eventually come to light in the situations that you face. You are a part of nature. If you have attached yourself to illusions of right and wrong that block your forward progress, this energy of biting through will dispel the illusion for you at this time. Now, unless growth is in the equation, life tends to reorganize by breaking things down. I suppose that's the law of sec uh, the second law of thermodynamics, isn't it? No, we won't go there. Now, ideas that foster separateness or boundaries blocking renewal or union need to be chewed over or presented through experience until the illusion is transformed into clarity. So I think you've got some things which you will be doing this month, I have to say. Now, an underlying cause which triggers this energy it can be suggested by living too much in the inner world leading, which leads up now, I think, for a time for your debut to get out, whether or not you are ready. You can create a false sense of reality and believe it is real. There is a hidden influence in here as well of, of, of obstruction, and I'm getting that from this thing here as well. And it shows, though, this, that any blockage is going to come down. Now, discernment is how the truth has to be given careful consideration, even if you'd rather not face it. The focus on the... Now, within here, there is a, a, a meaning here of mouth as I dig into it. But the focus on the mouth in this hexagram encourages clear communication. If there is something to be said to someone else, then speak up. If it is real, it will endure, and truth spoken is the only cure. Now, if you are expecting clarity from somebody else, it might not be forthcoming. This is because they may feel too severely judged by you. The best way to communicate during a time of this energy, I suppose, of biting through is to put personal agendas aside to truly understand the needs of the other person. Clarifying roles and boundaries might be in order, or you may simply need to just be there for someone while they figure out their own confusion. Now, biting through can lead to union, but you must have a willingness to listen. Now, incidentally, this is not about self-sacrifice. The other party's needs and sense of purpose, they must align with your needs and sense of purpose. Now, often when exploring somebody else's intentions, the answer shows unavailability because an 
unchangeable truth or law is there that blocks union, a prior commitment, such as marriage, for example, or an incompatibility of age or lifestyle can obstruct progress. The truth is more important than wishes when receiving this energy of biting through. It is time for you to see the truth in this situation, and until you do so, your progress may be blocked. Open to the possibilities that can emerge at this time, and emerge after the truth is clearly recognized. Well, what's the card that's underneath it? Let's have a look at it. Ah, Major Arcana of the Sun. Beautiful energy for you. Do you know if you've been on a difficult path? I think things have been rather trying for you, haven't they? Well, this is a turning point in your life and the illumination. Well, the sun is going to illuminate your path forward. But let me have a look at this painting that's, that's here and see what we can make of it, shall we? Well, the sun seems to be almost a maze of spirals. And the trees here, they're, they're all lined up in a way that is never found in nature. So this is something of a miracle here. And the rose at the front here appears dreamlike. The sun card here shows a picture of the idea of nature rather than nature itself. But it's very magical setting here suggests to me that you are going to have great protection during this time. Even though you may not realize that you are being protected. Now let's have a look and see what there is here. There is one of these Let's bring it in closer for you again, shall we? Here's one of these runes that are here in the shape of a, of a cross. That's called Gebo. Uh, look, I think that this refers to a partnership of some kind, which can either be business or love. I think it also refers to an important development in a romantic relationship. It also speaks to me of good times with respect to social relationships for you at this time. I think this indicates commitment and I think it also speaks of a gift of some sort. It may be an emotional gift of love or a material gift just when you need it. Often this is saying that there is here a gift that binds a relationship, a gift that is a symbol of shared love. There's generosity of some sort that's going to be present. And I think it indicates a time in your life that is full of peace and contentment. And then looking again at this other, this is a Hebrew letter as it turns out, and it's actually called Reish, and it's the 20th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, Strictly speaking, it means head, leader, or beginning. So leadership quality is something that is going to be with you at this time. And there is a new prosperous beginning ahead of you. It's also the symbol of choosing between greatness and degradation. I just happen to know that in the, in the word for uh, the Hebrew word rush has this letter in it, and that means poverty, right? But there is also another word, rosh, which means head or first, and that's where you are becoming now. You, you will be expressing the firstness, the oneness, and the eternity of the creator and the qualities of being a leader and not a follower. Now, this also has this sense of containing things. It represents containing the infinite of exponential growth, really quick growth. It also represents the constant transition, flow and change of life. It is like a constant flow of energy breaking through, breaking down into pieces and building anew.
And I think that takes us finally to Brahma. Brahma is the creator God in Hinduism and in part of the Hindu trinity, the trinity of God being Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer and the rebuilder. This is Brahma. Brahma is the God of creation, that aspect of God which creates. Now there are four faces here which meld it together. This necklace here together with the white robes suggests his membership of the priestly class. There is a scroll of religious texts, I would say, in his hand here, because Brahma is very much associated with the Vedas, with the, uh, the, uh, which of course are a great part of the scriptural history of Hinduism. And in this cup here, I would say that there would be milk, which Brahma puts together and stirs into the sacred fire with his rather long spoon. Now, what we can say here is that I think that uh, Sagittarius is going to be important to you during this period. It wouldn't surprise me if you don't have something to do with Scorpio as well. Now, these cards, of course, can be male or female when court cards, but I'm going to refer to it as a he for the obvious reason. So this is a man of activity, generosity, impetuous. So look, you'll be very active, generous, quite impetuous, I think. You may have a degree of pride with you. And you'll have very swift action. You'll take off in, in directions that aren't able to be predicted. And it may also be that there is a degree of fierceness around you. Now, I think in the environment about you, you may well find that there could be startling, perilous, even revolutionary qualities contained in events around you. But you should be cool, collected and resolute and energetic and be careful of the actions you take. Don't do anything that hasn't been well thought out and go forward with an alert confidence in your ability. There's dynamic forward motion here, increased insight and some coming changes. You'll be energetic and ambitious, adventurous, determined. I have to tell you that you're going to be very charming and magnetic, so people are going to find you very sexually attractive, and you may do with that what you think is best. But be awake, ready for people or situations which could produce dynamic changes in your consciousness. Be grateful for this gift from existence. Receive it and don't cling to it. Does your present situation allow your energies to develop and unfold fully? Seek out challenges and say to yourself, every challenge which arises helps me grow. Every storm strengthens my roots. Good job. I have to tell you that I thought that was a really interesting reading for you then. I really enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did providing it to you. This is going to be a good month for you. I can see it here and that's what it says for you now. So enjoy yourself. And of course, I'll then uh, see you next month. And remember this though, until the next time I see you, that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.